Okay. <laughs> Moving on. My other thing for what you're doing this week, I haven't talked about a board game in a while. I think it's been like two episodes. I'm so pretty we got... sure you talked about one last week. I didn't. Okay. So this week I got a, I got another new board game called Viticulture. This is a uh, one to six player game from Stonemeyer Games. We've played a couple. We've reviewed another one of their games that they make. Have we not played this before? You, I think you you might have played it. Um, but we played another game from them between two cities. Oh, okay. okay. Same company. Um, it's designed by uh, Jamie Stegmeyer, who's the same guy I think that direct or directed help design the other game um in this game you are playing as a owner of a vineyard everyone is their own owner of a little vineyard what's kind of cool you start out as like this little vineyard um you know basically you have a couple fields and then like eventually by the end of the game you're like this wine making juggernaut like i <laughs> it's awesome like you're like monopoly but anyways um what's cool about the game it's very thematic now it's a euro style game so maybe gerald will check out at this point yes. um but what's cool is it, it there's a lot of theme in this game which is usually missing from like euro style games when i say euro i mean like games that um don't have a lot of uh we're player fans. we're just playing player together. elimination Victory points right yeah. gerald likes the punching games um yeah. <laughs> so anyways in this game you're the rounds are broken up into years so you have like this there's seasons, seasons yeah. right so you have summer you have winter and what's kind of really cool is like during the summer you like go and get seeds to make to make grapes and then you plant the grapes and then you like work to like give wine tasting tours to people so you can make money so that you can buy like trellises so you can have different types of grapes or build like an irrigation channel so you get like a better vineyard this is like stardew valley <laughs> kind of yeah it is it's very farming simulator and then during the winter you focus on things like harvesting the grapes that you've planted and then making it into wine and then selling the wine to the the general public and that's how you get victory points so the game is relatively heavy. It's like a 2.9 out of 5 on Board Game Geek, which like 5 is like, you don't, no one plays 5s. But like, <laughs> it's so it's it's right in the middle of it's like, like weekend, yeah. it's like a medium weight game. Like, But I think, and I've played it with some new people that are like, uh, a little glazed over, but I'm like, stop, stop thinking of it as like this abstract game and start thinking of it as like your n- common knowledge of how wine is made. And then it clicks. Um, there's a couple really, really cool things about this too that feel thematic for instance, when you make wine, if you don't sell it immediately and you leave it in your cellar, it will get... Spoil. No. It actually gets more valuable. Oh, because it's aged. Yes. See? Like, that's genius. Like, most games, if you don't sell something, it goes bad. But in this game, because it's wine, it gets more valuable. And, like, to make um, more, like, blushed wines or, like, uh, sparkling... Say you have to age certain things at certain times. Yeah. yeah. So you can't yeah. just keep everything till the end of the game and sell it. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you have, like, uh, sparkling wines and, like... Blushed wines are, are uh, blended wines. Those are more difficult to make, so those are more expensive to, or you get more victory points to sell those. Um, there's these like uh, what are called? They're called the visitor cards. Like they're like chance cards in Monopoly. Like you get these cards, you could play them, and like uh, a a, um, a horticulturist will come to your uh, vineyard and help you plant like more than you know better grapes or something like that. Um, the components in it are fantastic. It is a worker placement game. That's like the central I've seen mechanic. Work because I'm like, oh my god, David. It's a central <laughs> mechanic. So like basically, what you're doing during your turn is you are taking these little workers and you're putting them on different parts of the the game board to perform certain tasks. Like again, build trellises or plant grapes or turn it into game. you know wine and all those different things. Um, so there's a little bit of player interaction because you're like vying for positions because you're like, I know Gerald needs to make wine this turn or sell wine, so I'm going to go to this space to sell wine before him. Right. Um, What's cool, too, is it doesn't have, like, after five rounds, whoever has the most victory points wins. It's no, it's whoever gets to 20 victory points first triggers, that's the last year, and then whoever has the most at the end of that point. So there's, like, it gives it the ability to, to like, take your time and kind of build this, like, cool vineyard. Yeah, I feel like in those games, like, the next time you turn around, it's like someone's hit 20, you're like, oh, my, I wasn't ready. I need yeah. two more rounds. Well, Jordan always talks about, like, these games, he finally gets the engine cooking, and then the game stops. Yeah. This doesn't do that. It gives you enough time because, like, you have getting to 20 points takes a little bit See, of time. I feel the opposite because at least if there's, like, why well, I only have four rounds, I feel like, okay, I know that's the end, so I can plan for that. Yeah. Again, the game is absolutely gorgeous. Really pretty, though. Yeah, pretty very, very pretty. All of the components are fantastic. Come um, kill someone with this box. This thing is yeah, so big. Yeah, like this company, Stonemeyer Games, they spend a lot of money on like just like the box. You know, like when components you... Components and stuff. Like Apple. You know, like Apple, like they like their packaging is nice. Like I know that doesn't shouldn't matter, but it does. Um, so Get definitely stickers, check this out. Man. Huh? <laughs> Get the sticker. No, yeah, the sticker <laughs> campaign is so stupid. Um, you can play one to six players. This is the essential edition. So this came out a couple years ago. Um, it, it's kind of a retooling of the original, which came out in 2013, I think. Yeah, I wrote it down here. 2013. So in board game, that's like a classic, like four years. Um, it's about 35 to 40 bucks. But dude, if you like wine, do you like wine? Do you like wine? I used to get into wine quite a bit. <laughs> 
get into wine. Yeah. That mangria. <laughs> no, remember a little bit because I was like, oh, this this helped with my uh, Asian glow a little bit more. That's and then right. now I'm just at the point where I just don't care. So Right. So you get a bottle of nice wine. You get some friends together. Play this. Put on Italian restaurant get a music. Up. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, it's really, really fun. We I pulled up like a, because you know, he's got to set the theme. So I started playing like Italian music on YouTube, like a playlist and it's all like pictures of pasta and tomatoes and i'm like <laughs> so racist I'm in Italy. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, so it's it, and they have a couple expansions for it uh, which are cool but the essential edition is the one that you can pretty much pick up now um they've streamlined some um, game mechanics and they've put in some new cards and stuff like that very very cool like i said 35 40 bucks definitely worth picking up if you like worker placement games or if you're kind of interested in something that's a little heavier than like you know, Ticket to Ride or... Caverna. Uh, Cav- well, no, Caverna's about as heavy as this. Oh. Um, but like Ticket to Ride or I'm trying to think of something else that's out there. Uh, King of Tokyo. If you want something a little heavier than that, pick up this. Fit a culture. Definitely check that out. Okay. Cool. That was my What You Doing. Now, <clears throat> let's get into this week's Pinnacle of Filmicle, where we keep up up with the top 100 movies of all time. This week, we are on number 79. Yeah, number 79, the superhero classic at <laughs> Clark... Oh, it's a crime drama. <laughs> Sci-fi. Oh, I guess kind of. A Clockwork Orange, 1971. Yeah. Direct- 